All right. I think we got six new images for getting the DLC. So, anyway. <coughs> so yeah, Monster Prom. Yeah, you're in high school. You're dating monsters. You want to take one to prom? Uh, there is already a sequel out, I think, or there's the camp one. It might not be a proper sequel, but regardless. Um, yeah, there we go. Monster Camp. Oh no. Uh, we're just gonna uh, just get to it, I guess. Uh, kind of. I I would rather have voice effects. Oh, well, it's just interjections, so I probably still have to read for them. Um, one player. I guess we'll do a, a run through each one and just play it by uh, play it by ear. I like that this is a short version. That's cool. Ah, spooky high school. The Swedish years of our lives. Swedish years of our lives. We just go controller. Yes, actually. Okay. So, back then we were young and unafraid, sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Okay, you get to... I like that you get to choose your representation. Okay, I recognize her because I think uh, Avant Geek cosplayed that one. Uh, I kind of I like this whole ink thing. Just go Oz, he pronouns. All right. I like you can choose your pronouns regardless of your uh, present um, presentation too. And we had yet to experience this ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember clearly, six weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. The fish people. Uh, the genocidal mermaid princess. Oh, I like the cut-off horn Hellboy nod there. Fearless demon with a taste for destruction of love and fire. Also, they made everybody of age, which is kind of cool. They're, they're still all under 25, so they're all weird little half monsters. But anyway, got Hal, where out the athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Hipster vampire. Oh, so we got the aloof one. Party ghost with insatiable hunger. And self made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. Had to be one of them, but who? We're young and unafraid and ready to start. So, yeah, we're just gonna kind of play it and see how these interactions go. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. We're no more. We're not using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Lots of problems. Stupidest pop quiz ever. We'll throw away a bunch of absurd questions that you would trigger answers to character stats. I like that. So each of you will start by having stats that are better reflect your true selves. Let's start. What is your soul emoji? The emoji that speaks the truth of your soul. Snowman. <laughs> that motherfucker is in the middle of a blizzard and he's fucking smiling. He doesn't give a fuck about blizzards. He has a gay ass hat. Location guy with the turban because fuck stereotypes. Or octopus emoji, best animal on earth. I know five mixed drinks, three drugged cocktails, and 17 sex positions that offer but that involve one or several more octo octopi. I'm here for the hat though. All right, you're elected president for a day. What's the per first law you uh, pass? Trivia fact: President so pass laws. So is this a trick question, or are you just being an idiot? That's very me. I uh, can deduct taxes by writing so taxes. Taxes by writing sonnets instead. Amount of taxes deducted or calculated based on the beauty of the sonnets. One dollar bills will now include a picture of me and the inscription "Beware." Too much awesomeness, nah. Yeah, I gotta be pedantic. I'm sorry. Will be deal breaker, deal breaker for a potential lover. Cowardice is fine. Lacks taste. Uh, boring is kind of there. Hates the outdoors is up there too, but at the same time. Mediocrity is fine. So boring. We, we start off with some points with the party girl. Okay. That's a good lead in. I like that. All 
All right. It's a little odd to me that the bathrooms are outside, but I guess that makes them accessible to the all the other bits. Um, we're here. Early. I'm just gonna go outside. I take during recess. You start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. No idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there were like 300 people. When someone's demons from a nightmare dimension, the consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself. But who cares? It's a rad party. Game plus two fun. Later, you, Polly, and Damien are practicing batting, which, which is stealing bats and hiding them in people's lockers. Well, I will attention fun and games interrupted by a blinding flash of light. There you are, exactly. There you are, exactly the monsters we wanted to see. Well, needed, not wanted. Seriously? Ugh, these guys again? They never want to do anything fun. Okay, those are the two we're hanging out with. Got it. We're not trying to ruin your fun. We're just trying to save your world. Univertica is planning an attack. Ugh, ugh, so boring. Ugh. Why am I even subjecting my ears to this bullshit? I'm going back to hell. Yes, that's what we need. Our partner on this mission, Rabaru, died right after discovering Univerica's weakness. I'm going to speak to her spirit. Not it. Hey, damn it. I said almost at the same time. But I'm allergic to helping. This is a serious health issue. But I'm prettier, so I shouldn't have to do anything ever. Guys, seriously, the world will end if you don't help us. We don't care who, but what do you need to step up? Whatever, just let the world end already. Then I want to take my midterms. Oh, Polly on this one. Midterms suck. Helping people sucks. Good luck with whatever you said your problem was. Well, the problem is the world ending. You're pretty sure nobody wants that. You don't really want to help either. Time to impress one of your classmates by forcing the other one to go help. What's the matter, Damien? Are you scared? Are you spicy little red baby? I am not a spicy red baby. I'm a spicy red adult. I'm just busy, okay? I've got way too much to do without worrying about whatever lame thing you're talking about. I just realized they're speaking in unison. That's awesome. The end of the world. What are we talking about? It's the end of the world. What's wrong with you people? Damn, well, if the world ends, I can't really beat the shit out of people or set things on fire. You win this round, Polly. I guess she's a slime girl? A water spirit? I wasn't sure she was a ghost or what. Still doesn't look super thrilled about it, but he bounces down to the underworld to search for this coven's lost ally. After a while, he returns. Okay, this, so there's witches in general. Dodger Pouch says Univertica is allergic to penicillin. Hope that helps, because I took a full 20 minutes out of my day. Penicillin, of course. We should have known. Thank you for this, David. You have saved the world. You're a hero. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Bounce off so I can get back to ra uh, rating butts on this butt rating app I just downloaded. Truly, you are the worst. Here's hoping the universe stays safe a little while, a while longer. I don't have to deal with you all again. A flash of light, the coven is gone, leaving you, Damien and Polly, in peace. Don't worry about all that stupid world saving stuff. Hey, Oz, thanks for covering for me. That was pretty spicy yourself. Oh, yeah, it was. The important thing is you impressed Polly, but you. Also, the world didn't end, which is cool, too. You gained plus two boldness and plus one charm. Okay. All right. Wait, there's cat people. I gotta, be, I gotta meet the cat people. Hey, stranger. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that'll boost your stats. Shit that'll lead to super new adventures. Here's some shit that might be much needed in some very specific moments, so take a look. I have five bucks. Alright, so we have some practical, yet f kind of funny glasses. The ladder shades. I guess everything is five dollars. Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Playing a corpse. <laughs> as if I'm starting to dispose of it. Uh, literally two holes. A plague with two holes. Literally just a white plague with two eye holes in it. I should be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. If it keeps on giving. 
creativity boost. I kind of wanted the, uh, the scary ghost costume. Take a badass tattoo. Recreate plus 9,000. Sexy fake Latin accent. Nah. Uh, Give me the ghost costume. What's going on at the auditorium? That day while you're rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves are just to give you a figurative blowjob. The performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standard. Three plus two creativity. There in the halls, you're on a Polly and Liam, who seem to be talking about some kind of flyer. The flyers for an upcoming music festival, Halapalooza. I like that they're changing outfits, too. So we agree on everything for Friday, right? Yeah, pretty much. On Saturday, we should totally get a messer... Messer chips and imagine a fucking dragon. So authentic. Dude, those bands are great. And then at 3pm, I want to check out that guy in the parking lot who just makes a cacophony for two hours. Um, Ghosts are super into cacophonies, but at 3am, I wanted to go to MC Griffin. Cool. Oh, I guess... I guess... You... I mean, it's a freaking Griffin that raps. It's the hottest shit right now, Liam. No, the hottest shit right now is in the criteria I used to pick the artists that you'd want to see, right? Yes. A griffin that raps, Liam! You'd better way to decide this and repeating our choices in a loud, annoying tone. But I love the loud, annoying tone thing. I know, still. The trick for how to choose the best scooter for this music festival. Can't do as much ayahuasca as possible until some kind of spirit animal appears and shares its wisdom with you? Or don't fight over this. Um... Uh, let's go ayahuasca. Interestingly high amounts of ayahuasca. You know how to charm a lady. Sounds problematic. Isn't it like cultural appropriation or something? Te if Technically, yes. Don't worry, Liam. If we acknowledge it as a cultural appropriation, it's not that bad. It's called lampshading. I do it all the time to avoid guilt. I'm starting to like her a little less. The other thing I pretend to appropriate is kick-ass mind-blowing ayahuasca high. I'm not sure you're right, but okay, let's go with it. Actually, I've heard that's pretty hip right now. If i pretty hip right now, you mean the hottest shit right now, huh? <sighs> I love a good old ayahuasca night. I wonder what spirit animal will reveal itself to us. Coyote with a deep voice, a turtle full of wisdom, a jellyfish that's super into breakdancing? I love the coyote one. He gives the best advice ever. Well played, sir. You got Paulina super hyped about this, and also she finds cacophony super funny when she's high, so I have a strong hunch I'll be seeing my thing. Uh, good, I want to see the cacophony too. Can I come with? By all means, feel free to join us. Yes! You seem pretty clever, and you also know how to manage our lovely, crazy, ghostly friend. You joined them, and despite what you might have hoped for, it all, all happened off-game. But it was pretty rad, and you know what? In the end, you got the jellyfish who was super into breakdancing. You into plus two fun and plus two creativity. Oh, okay, the shop moves around if you actually end up with more money. Go to the library. That day you spent some library time in the library's PCs, this is exactly what I would be doing. Like, literally. Oh, I guess I'm the slime monster. Okay. Darkbait 007. Uh, like, back, back in the day, I used to... Like, elementary school, I would freaking, uh... I'll put books away in the uh, school library, just so I would get time on the computer and go on Prodigy to play, like, checkers. <laughs> can't believe this is, like, a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? Time paid off, so fuck it. Hey, we got some money! Hey, uh, with two of the baddest asses you know, generally being bad and asses, and suddenly, a masked villain bursts in and threatens you. I've been waiting a long time for this confrontation, he says, following you, hunting you, preparing for the perfect moment, and now, prepare to meet your doom and pay for all that you've done to me. Ah, holy shit, I've never done anything wrong to anyone ever. I have no idea what this could be. I've done so many things wrong to so many people, I have no idea which one you could be. Wonder no more, says the mask villain and rips his mask off. Oh my god, of course, it's that guy, the one from, you know, I mean, you totally know this guy, right, Damien? Never seen this dude before. He must have beefed with Oz. I've beefed with all of you, tiny fools. It is I, Univertica Jr. 
Oh, of course, Univertica. Here. No clue. Collaborated with your three best friends to destroy my father. Scott, Fear, and Miranda. Oh, wait, he means Liam, Coach, and Alfred. I mean, Faith, Hope, and Joy. I have no idea who the fuck those people are. Yeah, I literally never heard of them. You be mortals, they are classmates of yours who formed a coven. Oh, the coven, they have names? Yeah, I definitely always think of them pretty much one entity. Yeah, right, that one time they made us talk to their dead friend Rabaru to get the. to killing some lame villain, and it turned out he was allergic to penicillin, right? What was that dude's name? Univertica. I am Univertica Jr. And now you will pay. I love that they keep the comma after the before the junior. Like it's great. Seems like you've really pissed this bad guy off. Luckily, you watch fiction. You know how this shit goes down. Think quickly, you. I have nothing against the Calvin. We'll do the sibling thing. I, I had always heard of the Logos sibling, but Oz. You, I never would have guessed. I mean, I suppose I do see the resemblance. We both have eyes, limbs, torsos, the ability of human speech. Oz, do you have any idea what this means? I have a group on for a whole day of fun sibling activities. But until I had, until now, I had no one with whom to indulge. You come with me, new sibling. I mean, you gotta see yes, right? Or risk blowing your cover. Also, your broke ass high school monster with very little money to your name. You need to turn down a free spot, eh? For a given answer, Univertica has spirited you away to a really badass spot for all kinds of evildoers. Get a really trendy virgin blood manicures and spider silk facials while wearing matching fluffy pink slippers and dragon skull battle armor. Go shopping for cute back to villainy outfits. And then, at the end of a super fun day, you decide to see if Univertica Jr. could be defe defeated by penicillin like his father. And from the way you di he died after he I, I figured that was going to come into it somewhere. The way he died after he slipped himself, you're thinking it's a yes. Crushed it. Plus two boldness and plus one smart trio, and your totes keeping all the swag. Your temporary big brother bought you before you killed him. Also, you totally impressed Polly and Damien. This is cute. All right. Well, let's go talk about that rad concert we went to. Well, I'm kind of curious what your deal is, too. Trying to enjoy a meal in peace when space and twists itself to real, the interdimensional prince. Oh god, oh, I, lo I love the Udna esque outfit. Most glorious hero, the thank the squid star, I found you. I've been confounded by the most fiendish riddle. A riddle that has vexed me for days, nay weeks, the riddle of how to change the ringtone on my new smartphone. It faces more torturous than my palace labyrinth. For real? You grab the prince's phone, change his ringtone to butts, butts, butts. All about these butts, by the booty bros. My hero, what seems difficult to be as trivial to you. You even guess which ringtone I desired. A true all-time classic from the sixth dimension. There's only way I can repay one way I can repay by bestowing upon you a superpower of your choice. I can do that. I'm the prince of another dimension. I can do all sorts of crazy things you don't know about. All kinds of crazy things besides use his phone, apparently. He really gives you two superpower options. As much as I would love an ass to don't quit, uh, telepathy is probably where I go. Prince whacks you on the head with his telepathy rod, granting you access to the minds of others. Right in the middle of a high school cafeteria at lunchtime. You are overwhelmed with images. A goblin's butt problems. A genie's foot fetish. There would be a foot guy. Two swamp creatures imagining each other naked. It's too much. You plead with the prince to dagger your ability to telepathy, but only when you're drunk. Very well. Your wish is my command. Perfect. Now you have an excuse to get drunk before every quiz. Until now, it's just regular alcoholism. You gain plus four smarts despite the loss of brain cells. All right. I think you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. There's no tea in that hangman yet. Are there no butts? Amazing hair though, that's probably the second closest a game has gotten to my hair ever. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hang out in the bathrooms. You give plus zero shits but you gain plus two boldness. You spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. Seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. You wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and uh, approach with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. That's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst, most likely tied to the disappearance of Mars Argo. Oh, what's this? A ghost? 
Perhaps a foreign exchange student. What are you talking about? Oh, gasp. I didn't see you there. It's so ghostly. You guys are joking, right? Clearly just always wearing a plug with eye holes cutting it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam, why don't you see anyone saying... You don't see anyone saying, oh, Liam, it's really just Oz wearing a plug with eye holes cutting it. Exactly, Liam, even despite the many times he suspected it was so. What? Oh, sorry, little ghost. We were ignoring you. That's true. So tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, yes, divulge, divulge. Ultimate ghost prank, haunt someone in despair. Spot a victim for your prank, the coven. Start running in the direction while screaming your best boo to date. What's this? Maybe it's a meeting of Queen Nehalenia. That's a that's a delightful Sailor Moon reference. Uh, rumors say she's preparing uh, to be the big bad in its next season. Not booing at us. It's hard enough to say the word on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing! The school is unbelievable! Ugh! They go running for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Oh, the ghosts clearly haunted them and they fought against all kinds of evil creatures. Oh, the ghosts, so cool. You just ride out the wild booing. I could literally do that. Yet you didn't do it, Liam, therefore you're not a ghost, you're just Dallas. Yeah, this is a very powerful ghost. Ghosts, we respect your ghost powers, we wish you the best on your ghost adventures. You leave running and booing before they realize how obvious it is that you're just. You with a blanket today. You gain plus two boldness and plus one smarts. All right. Uh. I feel like we should go to class at least once. Yeah, I'll probably do the class in the field or the gym, I guess. Get a little bit of everything, and then we'll. Deal the rest. Uh, that day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all, the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks. You forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You get plus two smarts. Of course, of your activities, you come across Vera and Polly hatching yet another scheme. Sneak a little closer so you can eavesdrop. Listen, this has been a fruitful partnership so far, in terms of making people look like imbeciles. I think it's time we monetize. Sick burns don't buy fresh outfits. Yeah, fine, whatever. I guess I could use some new thongs or whatever, but like... I'm gonna stop making people look dumb just so we can make money. I don't want to sell, sell out. I All right, I respect that. Personally, I can't wait to sell out, but you have a point. We can't sacrifice our brand. The question, of course, is how do we do both? Yeah, how do we get rich off yanking people's change? Oh, careful with your choice of words, Polly. What, change is a big thing for ghosts? Of course. They don't seem to have any immediate ideas. Maybe you can offer a solution? You make a phony workout craze and work for Frank Pilates, the inventor of Pilates. Oh, okay. I'm here. Oh man, do I have a great prank for you. I call it stealing. Hmm, stealing. I like where your head's at, but it keeps you catching your name. What about humping? Humping is already a thing. Yeah, but it's awesome. Fair point, but we need something class here. Something that says this is cool and also legal. Ooh, theft. Warmer? Warmer. Oh, what about finance? Um, that's already a thing. Fine. How about ambush finance? Oh yes, that's hot. We need to discuss whether or not they can uh, trademark stealing. Meanwhile, you gain pl two plus two creativity and plus one boldness. All right. All right. Uh. Scott and Polly are sitting together, laughing their metaphor glasses off. Okay, lumberjack. Wolfman, goddamn, respect. I'm Davy, look at my stupid red face. I use violence to cover up the fact that I've brought up the reverse of revered tactic version of masculinity has alienated me from my own true emotions. Ah, oh, you sound like exactly like him. Okay, okay, you do Vera. I am Vera. I'm very smart. My hair is pretty, and all my friends look up to me because I'm a strong, independent woman. Scott, I'm not sure you understand how impressions work. I'm not Scott, I'm Vera. You can tell just cause it, because I just said, I said my name just now. Okay, uh, what about you, Oz? You got any good impressions? Just one, but it's real doozy. Woof woof, it's me, Scott. A dog boy is bad at impressions. I know you're doing impression because you said my name, but... Oh my god, that sounds exactly like him. It does? Yeah, remember that time... 
in impressions class together. We had to introduce ourselves. Oh well, yeah, I guess I did say Wolf Wolf and Sweet Scott and Dog Boy is bad at impressions. How do you yell like that? Sorry, are you the real Scott? There's two absolutely identical werewolves in front of me. I can't tell the difference. All I insist on smoochie contest is determine which, who the real Scott is. You end up winning in more ways than one. We haven't done gym yet, so we'll do gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Then you do a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. Close to charm. Then you realize you're feeling like uh, going full ghost with your blanket again. Yes! You're observing your surroundings when you spot Miranda and Damien. You're about to get closer on suddenly. Greetings, beautiful high schoolers. It's I, the interdimensional prince. I'm here to rescue you from your mundane existence. Just sign these marriage papers. Not this guy again. Look. Whoa. <gasps> Underworld Spectre. Again. What again? What again? Look at this clear, kick-ass, powerful ghost. Look at his face. So deadpan, no expression at all. Because it's not a face. It's a sheet with two holes cut in it. And I wish my face had two holes cut in it. That would be fucking metal. No, listen. It's not a face. It's... Ghost friend, help us. Save us from this interdimensional creep. Yeah, do something. Something ghostly. <laughs> Throw a rock at him. Ouch! Inappropriate. The other violence I tolerate is the violence of love. When a man forces pure love onto his not. Whoa, dude! Dude, although also an apt parody of the princes in Utna. <laughs> pure love onto his not mutual lovers. That and the violence imposed by my army, usually alongside the former type of violence. Damn, what a piece of shit. We're back for you, my young lovers. And so he retreats into his dimension. Superb! Metal, I go just beat the prince with his ghost powers. Just threw a rock at him. Do pay attention, it clearly was a ghost rock. The difference between a rock and a ghost rock? One is a rock, another is a fucking ghost rock! You do realize you didn't answer my question, right? Ghost rock! Huzzah! Yeah, throwing a rock at your problems like a champ. You get plus two fun and plus one boldness. How's my charm that low? All right. All right. Got doors again. Okay. Oh, the rave. You're talking to Swan, the small uh, magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you never be as fun to Bob the scary clown. Accept the challenge. You go straight up to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding chest, and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? Do you think how this works? Well, but it is. You get plus two fun for poor Bob. Minding your own business when Vera gra grabs you by the collar and yanks into a huddle with her and Polly. We're in big trouble, asshole, and it's all your fault. Yeah, Ambush Finders has been a huge success. Too huge. You want us to write a book about it? You don't know how to write, you don't know how to write a book. I appreciate the irony of the of the Medusa. The, the, the snake person. The Gorgon, I'm sorry. Being like... At least 60% leg. That's, that's, that's great. We already accepted the advance. It took a bunch of Adderall and I wrote 270 pages of garbage about stealing. But of course, the publishing house would accept it. Missing a big reveal at the end, some kind of ultimate secret to ambush finance, finance success. That's where you come. Yeah, you came up with the idea in the first place. We owe you absolutely no royalties, by the way. But we figured you could help us come up with a big secret for the end of the book. What do you say? Keeping in mind that if you say no, I'll have you skinned. All right, um... It's <laughs> both funny as the like organ is. I feel like the no secret thing fits the spirit of Ambush Finance. Oh snap, that's the ultimate prank! We're stealing their money by tricking them into buying a book about stealing money. Very mean and very on brand. If anyone complains, we'll just tell them it's an avant-garde self-help. French words also... French words always shut people up. Wait, I can put this in the final draft. Wait, but remember, Polly, we've got a bank heist scheduled for 5.30. We can't be slacking now that we're celebrity burglars. After that, and this is so much fun, I can't believe it's legal. Of course. You pretend you didn't hear all that. You need plus two fun and plus one creativity. All right.
Whoever chooses to be able to find Damien dejectedly having a ball of mashed potatoes will probably sadly pass their hands for the same. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly do not know. I tried throwing p potatoes at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone's too scared of me to fight back. I can't throw any food because my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture? Sure, but not food. Gotta be a way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. We're not political. Your strength is hitting things. My strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot? That's it. We set the cafeteria on fire. Wait, no, that's not a solution. That's just arson. Why don't we jump straight to arson? Why not? Hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves. You step with an idea of your own. Uh, I, I would go the political path. Wars are fun for scarce resources. Steal everybody's food and put in a pile. I don't know. Oh, is that politics? Is that what politics is? Beating people up and steal, putting their stuff in a big pile? I know I was already so good at politics. I can roll around in the food pile. I feel so good on my non skin. But she's in the wham. Uh, Demon spends the rest. Of, although it, it doesn't stick to her, like I guess it's not technically wham. I don't know. Damien spends the rest of the lunch piling over his food in an enormous food mountain. Hungry students are soon swarming in the mountain, trying to grab what they can while Damien pelts them with fire and knives from above. I thought this was a food fight. In a panic, the students turn on each other, fighting with the only weapon they have, the food in their hands. Aha, food fight! Food fight! I think a fight like this is how I died. Casualties were beyond counting, but no one will be forgetting that food fight anytime soon. All right. What's up? Oh, you just mean my shit, huh? No worry, no worry. The shit can be yours if you have the money. I definitely don't have the money. Okay, the tampon thing's a little weird. We're actually gonna get the gift. Oh, it's just a free stat boost, but you can only buy one thing. Thanks. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. We don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. It's marvelous. Somehow it enhances the pathos of the play in unexpected ways. I'm not saying something since half your improvisation is a rap battle against your interferes. Plus your creativity. I d didn't notice the mustache before. She's probably floating up on the catwalk, muttering to herself. She perks up when she sees you. I love the Plague Doctor outfit. That's so good. Oh man, perfect. I need some advice. I was nervous about signing up for the talent show. I promised him I'd sign up too. I don't know what to do. Sex having and drug dealing are all banned on stage after my act last year. I can't think of any other talents. I don't want to back out, but I don't want to do something lame just because, you know? What would you do if you were me? I'd look through walls at naked people, because duh. Um, I. Uh, we'll go twerking. Oh, wow, yeah! Twerking is so much a part of, such a much a part of my life, I forgot it was even a talent. The morning routine is just like, wake up, twerk, breakfast, drop it on the floor because I'm still twerking. If twerking was a sport, I'd be the quarterback. Except we got more than a quarterback, if you know what I mean. You assume she's referring to her ass. I love that this guy actually You assume she's referring to her ass! You're inclined to agree. You gain plus two charm and plus one fun. Alright. Right, who's this person with the hood? I love the Godzilla... I, I didn't notice the Godzilla lunch attendant before. You find the Slayer sitting alone at a table. Is she even a student or what? I like that outfit. Wait, you're choosing to sit with me? For some reason, no one ever intentionally sits next to me. We just have to ambush them and threaten to kill them. I wonder why. It's a mystery. Anyway, I'm really happy you... I mean, I'm flattered that... I mean, actually, uh... Wouldn't you give... It, uh, wouldn't give a shit about you under normal circumstances, but today I'm on a quest. Yeah, that's right. I'm not emotionally vulnerable. I'm just on a quest to slay the werewolf of Wall Street. New monster sidekick. You're gonna help me, obviously. 
you know what your class is. Are you a fighter, a mage, a cleric? Out with it. Oh, you're something much better. You're a... Gun haver. A gun haver? Is that even a class? Practically everyone has guns. You reveal just how many guns you actually have. Holy shit. How can you even carry that many guns? Why are you allowed to have them at school? Give your red biceps to thank for the former, and Monstropolis is strong Second Amendment protections for the latter. Okay, well, you have silver bullets. Werewolves are only vulnerable to silver bullets. Man, there's a color bullet you don't have. Well, um, all right, let's uh, go on an adventure then. We travel together to Wall Street, where you shoot the wolf of Wall Street with your guns. All right then. I um, you. I'm gonna go ahead and run stream away for you if that's all right. Oh, it is. God bless Monstropolis. Game plus four boldness. I didn't mean to go to the, the shop. I'm not gonna get the... Ugh. I was hoping for an event. I didn't I should have looked at the list to see that they were there. Alright. That day you're astonished by some new stuff you learn in class. You thought that high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class would actually be useful? What a nice surprise. In plus one valuable lesson. Good luck trying to use that within the game. Plus two smarts. At least you probably vomit... I thought, this, I thought that said vomit capitalism. I'm like, what the hell? Vomit ectoplasm all over her cell phone. You rush over to help her. Oh, she said my 97th hey as an opening line on a horny dating app. I had to puke at a... You're bored him. Hey, hey, what am I supposed to do with hey? Whatever to, whatever happened to reaching out to someone with a free fears of dick pic? People are copy pasting hey and sending it to every monster that looks halfway interesting. So are you? Are you a hey person too? I hope not. If you read the horny dating app TM profile of fun loving special delights such as myself, what would you say to me? These are both terrible, but this is a way worse pickup line. Hell yeah, drugs. It's a great opening line. Also, let's do drugs. Wake up in an un in you wake up an indiscriminate amount of time later, feeling like shit, but happy about it. So like unicorn shit, where it's Rambo or something. When you run a poly later. She's grinning like a lunatic, and it's clear something went down. Maybe one of you. Hey there, cutie patootie. I had the best time the other night. Really do all this again sometime, and I mean all of it, even that zoo animal style stuff. I left a couple things in my place. I put them outside your locker. With that, Polly disappears, leaving you to wonder what exactly transpired between you and what article of clothing you left behind. When you open the box marked Oz, you see her a pair of handcuffs and a little. Last surviving Bresky Pigeon. Neither of those things are yours, but you would hate for Polly to think you're lame. Apparently when she said zoo animal stuff, she meant stealing a bird. It seems like maybe you guys didn't have much sex, but she clearly wants to spend more time with you, so... Hell yeah! Go home with a huge grin, a new pair of handcuffs, and the last surviving... Whoops. That was the last surviving Bresky Pigeon. You should be more pretty careful with your belongings. Irrelevant! You've gained Polly's admiration and plus two charm and plus one fun. Alright. We could hang with the Coven if we wanted to. Find Polly Scott huddled at your chosen table. If these two are together, you'll only mean one thing. Oh. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Hey, back how this meeting of the prank masters to order. Prank master, ho. Prison to cut for. Damn and Geist, already dressed up and ready to prank. Hey, how come you get to be chairman? One of us can throw chairs around the room without our. Well, which one of us can throw chairs around the room with our ghost powers? Well, I don't have ghost powers, so. Oh, you, I get it. Chair, man, but. Instead of Aggie Scott, we gotta come up with a baller food prank before the end of lunch. Oh, yeah, what What if we. Okay, what if we. Get all our food like a good boy? Is that a prank? No, Scott, for the last time, it's not a prank. I don't eat. I don't have any trouble coming up with another idea. Anybody else? I'm waiting all your life for an opportunity like this. You propose the ultimate food prank. Given how many horror games I've spent putting chairs on top of everything. Replacing all the food with chairs. Yes! You know what they say when life gives you chairs. Do pranks with the chairs. Never heard Coach say that. Sounds like the kind of thing you would say, though. Yeah, it kind of does. How am I supposed to help, though? You're the chairman. Scott, just be a chair. Oh, of course. Scott twists himself into an uncomfortable-looking shape. He seems to be happy, though. Like this? 
activate act, act that. Now if you go. We this make me chairman? Sure, totally. Holly doesn't seem to mind sharing her title with Scott or her affection with you. Frank, achieved. Some night gym. Another epic dodgeball match. Well, boy, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team. It's only convince him not to throw the ball at you uh, with a heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears and you take advantage of that moment of weakness, throwing a ball at him. You lose minus five mercy. Stop by the useful monster prompt sequel, but isn't now. I gotta get the sequel so we can see if mercy's actually in it. I mean, plus two charm. You could start doing something productive, or you could put on your blanket and get up some good old ghost shenanigans. Ghost run. You're looking for someone, but you're another person that might finally see through your ghostly deception. Far from boring Liam. Oh no. Wait, what's this? Another ghost? No, I can't believe this. Finally, someone else notices. Clearly just all is wearing it. I can't believe it because it's just too cool to be true. Of all, it's not cool or true. Liam, I can't hear our new ghost friend over all your jealousy. Tell me, how did you die? We have to share so much ghost gossip, or ghost as I like to call it. Hmm, good question. Time to improve a lie with another bigger lie. I only tell how I died on third date. Boo. Ghost wink. What? Probably just a big lie. You're probably just some idiot who said a word. Like it to imitate a ghost. Finally. He died a stupid way like I under that blanket. Then you were cursed for dying a stupid way the ironic punishment of having to wander the world under the very realistic ghost look. You are literally a ghost. You know what ghosts are supposed to look like. I know what this sexy ghost looks like right now. Disappointed. Bye. And she fades up. Wait, you're making my life miserable. You like it where you're a moron. Your life is miserable now. You look totally lost two, two fun and one charm. Monster prom draws near. I mean, Polly's kind of the obvious one. Hey, boo! All right. I lo okay, the little heartbeat's cute. Hey boo, prom? Nah, ghost on ghost like super vanilla. I have enough ghosts with myself. Something else, maybe like a zombie or a gin or Frankenstein's monster, the very concept of fear. But no, you're clearly a very realistic ghost, just like me. Wait, you actually are one of those things. Holly out. And she's phased out before you can take off your stupid blanket. God damn it. Prom that sucks. Why did you decide to ask anyone prom while wearing a blanket? So you can't take it off after that. You pretended to be a ghost, yet you're the one haunted by the ghosts of your failures. Ooh. It's like, I want to know how many endings there are. I love the superlatives, and I love that they have uh, bars to keep track of everything. I think it would have been funnier if they made you keep, if they let you have the uh, ghost uh, blanket in the uh, photo. But okay, these six weeks were perhaps the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, and learning about who we are and who we could be. And what, like, it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. I took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of her time partying. There was almost no work because, you know, summer. I was going to say, it looked like 2010, but no, it's 20 XD. You were about the Oberlin Empire to endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's... Known that there are also no, a lot of sketchy businesses, but no one does anything about it. I mean, who the hell would try to stop Vera Overlin? Was that a blob bro in the middle? That's cute. Got to be a world-renowned athlete, but he ended uh, his career to come back to his hometown and take the job the athlete admired the most. And he's back in high school again, working as the coach. For those six weeks, Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. Once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I love that this is very, like, lo-fi garage band. Is that Mumra? Oh, okay, they're the devs done in the style of their favorite monsters. Of course, she'd be teaching etiquette. I love it. That was cute. I 
I love that the drop said player character. Beach episode. Well, full episode, I guess. It was not aware DJ Combat was involved with us, so. Really? I would not have called uh, the Yogg as the scheme's inspiration, but that's another one that's on deck. That's not a dating sim or anything. Well, that's kind of cute. Just look at the hangout with Polly in the final photo. So maybe it worked out after we got the uh, blanket off. Erotic fanfic about dragons. This is about to get weird. About to get weird. Let's see what's in the gallery here. Just basically all the character portraits. Sort of a space cult. I've seen the robot in somebody else's play. Yo, oh, it's a Squatch. Oh, I think if I remember correctly, the the Kappa kit, the yeah, the cop is like completely a mess. Wait, are there other titles for these? Oh, it's supposed to, it's Colossus, baby. It's like, my brain was going to like Mazinger. Thunderman, Poison Ivy, obviously. Okay. The feet, though, the feet. I did not realize Jesse Cox was the producer on this. Oh, that's kind of cool. They have like a fan art section too. I guess I have to view them to get the tags off them. Oh, I guess these are backers or other people that cover them. That's kind of cute. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get the feeling like backers at a certain level on Kickstarter were able to get a monster Sona done by the artist. That makes me... Okay. 